Shalom. I want to make a video for you students of Greek and even those who are curious about ancient translation of the scripture. We're going to look at Genesis 1 31. That is the last verse in Genesis 1 and the first two verses of Genesis 2 in the Septuagint translation or ancient Greek, which is dated probably to third century BC. So it's pretty old. Um, and these are the verses here, and I will read through them. But uh, the focus of this video is to help uh, Greek students who are working through specifically Bill Mounts's uh, Basics of Biblical Greek. I call it BBG. And we're using the fourth edition from Zondervan, which is the, the latest edition. And we're looking up through chapter 10 where we're introduced to the third declension nouns. And so uh, in prep for our reading of this passage from Genesis, I want to do a, a review of the paradigm that we learn in chapter 10 of pa, uh, pas, pasa, pan. Pas, pas, pan. This is uh, the adjective that means all. And we get pas, pas, pan. This is the masculine form, the feminine, and the neuter. And we're going to learn, uh, as we review this, that the masculine and the neuter are in third declension, while the feminine is in the first. So we call this a three a 313 three adjective. It means that the, the masculine and the, uh, the neuter are in third declension and the feminine is in first declension. So we're going to review that and then we're going to take that refresher as we go through those verses from Genesis. So one thing we need to remember here with pas pas upon, as Mounts tells us, is that the root is actually pant. Punt, P alpha nu tau. And the nu and the tau at the end here are going to give us a little bit of grief. And what we learn is, well, not grief, I'm, I say that amusingly. Um, remember, if we have a stem that ends in a, a nu and we have a sigma to add due to a, a, an inflection, then we lose the nu and the sigma wins. Same thing with the tau. Greek doesn't like to end a word in a tau, nor does it survive if it collides with a sigma due to, uh, due to the declension pattern. So what we're going to look at is how that happens. And what I want to do is, I'm going to kind of be redundant here. I'm going to write punt. Um, I think I can use my, my software here so I don't have to write it over and over and over again. I think if I do this and then I go boom, well that let me uh, copy paste. There we go. Okay. So I've got it twice here. Oops. And what, what we're going to see is these are our singular, these are our plural. And we're going to look first just at the, the third declension. So we're going to look at the masculine and the neuter. I know I'm breaking the pattern. Normally we, well actually, you know, I could do, I'll just do the neuter over here and we'll save the feminine for later. Because remember, the feminine is already modified. We learn it as pasa. So we'll do that uh, in a moment. But first we're going to do the masculine and then we'll do the neuter. So with the, the masculine ending we add is the sigma. And remember, the sigma overrides the tau and the nu. And what do we get? Pas. So our nominative, remember this is nominative, genitive, dative, accusative, all the way down. Nominative, uh, genitive, dative, accusative. Uh, pas. So the sigma uh, wipes out the tau and the nu. So it's the root is still pont. Um, with the genitive in the third, remember this is a 313. I'll write this one more time. In the third declension, the genitive is Omicron Sigma. And that just goes nicely onto the end of pant, pantos. There you go. Of all. 
of all or of each, something like that. Uh, remember the the dative singular as the Yoda subscript? So it's just Panti, right? There it is. We keep, we see that we have the full Pant in both the uh, genitive and in the dative. And then we have our Alpha for the accusative Panta. There you go. Pas, pantos, panti, panta. Now we're going to do our plurals. Well, what do we have for our uh, nominative, nominative plural? It's epsilon sigma. And we get pantes. So we get the full pant plus the ending, pantes. Pant plus on, omicron nu. That's our trusted old uh, genitive plural friend. Pantos. Or sorry, Panton. What am I doing? Uh, Panton. I was correct the first time. Of all things. Something like that. Of all. When it's plural. Now, our dative plural is Sigma Yoda with a movable nu. Remember, the nu uh, doesn't add information or change meaning. It just functions... Just like we say a car or an elephant, we add that letter N there. Similar thing happening here. But because we have the sigma, what happens? Same thing that happened up above when we had the sigma. It wipes out the nu and the tau, and we get pasin, like that, movable nu. And then finally, alpha sigma. Pantas for the accusative plural. So there's our, looks like I'm kind of writing at an angle there. I'm trying to cram a lot of info here. Let's, uh, I'm going to move, because I'm doing that, let's move this over a little bit and make room. Now remember, with the nominative in the third declension, I'm going to just kind of skip right through the feminine the genitives and the datives are the same. So this is helpful in your memory work. Pantos and panti. And the same thing here in the plural. They just carry right over. Panton. As I get to the side of the page here, it's my handwriting suffers. And pasin, movable new. There we go. So those are all the same. So that just leaves uh, for our neuter. We need our nominative and accusative in the singular, and we need our nominative and accusative in the plural. Well, if we do our memory work from our um, our lexical form back up here, pas pasapan, we know that it's pan. And guess what? It's also pan for the neuter. Remember, the neuter uh, uh, nominative and accusative are the same, uh, whether they're singular or plural. That leaves one more here, and it's panta. Panta and panta. And we'll see this word panta in our Genesis passage, and we got to uh, look at context to, the, to determine whether or not panta is functioning as a nominative or is it a as an accusative, we have to look at context because the word in and of itself doesn't carry uh, enough information because it could be more than one thing. So there's our uh, fleshing out there of the third declension of the masculine and the neuter of, of the stem pant in Greek in the adjective meaning all. Now we're just going to do the feminine. Guess what? It's a first declension noun. All we have to remember is pasa. And we're just going to go down. Now it declines because the alpha stem comes before a sigma um, rather than like a rho, like hora, uh, hora oh, remember, um, or ho, uh, hora rather, not the verb, the uh, hora, uh, hora, hour, it comes after the, the rho. And so um, like with hora, we, our genitive is horas. We retain that alpha. But not, not in this instance. In this instance, we go pases, 
like that. Passes, we'll just use a sig or an eta, uh, eta with a Yoda subscript, passe, and then uh, passan, and then we go our plural, passai, it's going to be uh, passon. This is uh, just a, a nice feminine passais uh, for our dative plural and then passas like that for our accusative plural. So there's our complete paradigm there of pas pasapan. Pas pasapan. And you don't have to write it out in as much detail as I did, but you want to write out um, at least the main 24 forms and do that uh, while you're drilling on your definite article. And it'll be a big help. Okay, so just to recall, why do we have to have so many forms for an adjective? Well, remember, an adjective is a modifier for a noun. And since Greek has nouns that can be in a masculine, feminine, or neuter, we have to have uh, a form of the adjective that will agree with the noun in all three uh, aspects, in in its gender, in its number, and in its case. And so we're going to see some examples of that in our reading from uh, Genesis 1. So let's go back to our text here. So this is Genesis 1, 31 through 2, 2 in the Greek. And we'll just go a little bit by little bit here. So at first we see, oops, jumping around on me here. Kai eden hoteos. Tapanta. So as mounts would do for us in our, uh, as we learn in our workbook, Aiden is, is just he, he would do this. He, she, it, saw. Well, we know that <clears throat> uh, the nominative here, do you see what the nominative is? What's the subject? Hotheos. Right, that's our uh, nominative. It's a second declension noun, just like hologos, for example, that we learn. Uh, and it's, we've got the definite article there, <clears throat> pardon me. So that's our subject. So therefore we eliminate, it's not she or it, it's, and we don't even need to translate he, we just know that there's agreement here. So we say, and, and God saw. So that's our basic sentence here is, okay, Eden hoteos. And then we have this word here, tapanta. Tapanta, God saw. Well, there's two options here when we see uh, panta, just like we saw with when we did the paradigm. It, it's obviously, remember our uh, lexical form is uh, pas, pasa, pan. And there are actually three candidates. If all we saw was uh, panta, three candidates. It could be a masculine singular accusative it could be a neuter singular nominative or it could be oh sorry not a neuter singular a neuter plural or it could be a neuter plural accusative let's we'll scroll back down hopefully it won't make you dizzy here so we look at our chart and we see where where do we see panta? And I'll, I'll change the color to green here so we can see. There's our uh, masculine singular accusative. Or it could be our, our uh, neuter nominative plural or our neuter uh, accusative plural. Do you see all three of these are panta? They all look the same. So when we encounter it in a text, how do we know? How do we know? Well, we have to eliminate some of them. Now, how do we do that? Well, we know in this sentence, kai eden hoteos, we already have a nominative. Nominative singular. And we know the verb is singular, although we haven't done verbs yet with mounts. Uh, we can trust that. And so it can't be nominative. So we can eliminate the nominative plural. We can eliminate the nominative plural as an option because we, we're not going to have competing subjects. We can't have a, a singular subject and a plural subject in the, in the same sentence. 
Um, so that leaves accusative. Is it accusative uh, singular or is it accusative uh, plural in the neuter? Well, how we determine that is we, we notice the definite article here, ta. The definite article is a neuter definite article. So it can't be a masculine. It can't be masculine. So neuter plural accusative is the correct answer. And so what it means? Everything. And God saw everything. That's probably a decent, uh, decent translation. Or all things, right? All things. And then we have a clarification, hosa, um, which is also in the neuter plural. So that's uh, green. Uh, whatsoever epoiasin is he made. So this word here, it is he, she, it made. And then it says kai idu. I don't know, remember if we've learned idu yet, but it's like hine, it's behold. So idu is behold. Kala lian. Kala lian. What does that mean? Kala. Well, that's another adjective. Let me get back here. Kala. And guess what? It's from kalos. That's our, uh, that would be our uh, masculine. It's a second declension. And then we'd have kale for our feminine and a first declension. And then kalon, also second declension. So this would be a two, one, two adjective. Kala is our neuter accusative. And it is a green all the way back with tapanta. So it's functioning. Kala means good. And it's translated the Hebrew word tov. Tet, vav, bet. Sorry, my Hebrew looks kind of scribbly there. And, and lian is translating ma'od. The Hebrew word ma'od, very. So, and behold, very good. And, and it's functioning kala as an adjective modifying everything. That means everything was good. Okay, let's continue here. Then it says, kai agenita. So we, we see agenito, agenita. Sometimes I'm lazy with that last vowel. Agenito, kai uh, agenito. See this? This is, and it was. We haven't learned the verb yet, but agenito is, and some some soften the, the gamma there to agenito, something like that, but uh, agenito. And it was. And Hespera, of course, is evening, as you might guess. Hespera and proi, morning. Himera hecte. Himera hecte. Here we just have a simple uh, noun with an adjective. Himera. And we know this from our vocab already. Himera, that's just our simple, uh, that's our uh, feminine singular in the nominative case. Himera. And that's an alpha stem after a row. So remember, just like hora, if we were to do the declension, the uh, genitive is going to be like that. Himeras and uh, himera with a, a alpha and iota subscript. And then hecte. Hecte. Well, hecte strangely ends in an eta, not an alpha. Why? Well, because remember, um, the hecte is also just, it's just like kalos up here. It is a two, one, two adjective, meaning sixth. It's a, a, the ordinal, ordinal number, sixth. So it would be hectos, like that. Hectos, hecte for the feminine, and then hecton. So a two, one, two, and we're using the first declension, feminine, to, because we have to agree. Remember, a, a, an adjective has to agree with the noun it's modifying. So although they don't rhyme, we have himera is feminine and hecte is feminine. And that's all we need. So we translate this as 
you could probably say just a sixth day. So there's no definite article here. So it doesn't fall into the rule of uh, attributive, first or second attributive position. A sixth day, himera hecte. So we're seeing the use of adjectives here in our passage. Well, let's continue on here. Chapter 2, verse 1. Kai sunetelestesan. That's a big word, isn't it? Sunetelestesan. Sunetelestesan. That is uh, a mouthful, of course. It's got a ton of letters. And this is a passive, is an aorist passive verb. Were fin they were finished from uh, Suntileo. But they we're going to say they were completed or finished. And then we have a list of nominatives, ha uranos, because our, our verb is plural, they. So that means often we're going to have a list of nominatives that will consist of that they. Ha uranos, uh, I'm sure you probably know that if you've studied Greek uh, up through chapter 10, the heavens or the heaven, kai, there's our and, hege, that's haaretz in Hebrew, that's the, the earth. Hege, but feminine. So we have a, a, a masculine noun, a feminine noun. And so when it when our verb is they, it doesn't mean, remember, there's no gender encoded. So it could be a list of things, some of which are masculine in gender, some are feminine. Ha-uranos, and remember, these are in the nominative. And then and we have another kai. Now notice, I'm going to zoom in here. Pas ha cosmos auton. So there's our pas. Remember what we reviewed below is our adjective all, and we learn it as pas, pasa, pan. Pas, pasa, pan. You want to memorize that, and it's a 313 adjective, remember? Well, pas is the only place we see that word, it is in the masculine singular nominative and that's what we have here pas ha cosmos all now here we have our word cosmos and you think of cosmos right with a c cosmos like carl sagan and that's where we get the word but here it means decoration it's like um uh what's the word for oh cosmetics like adornment this same word there so Ha cosmos, all their array. So all, pas is in the, uh, this is the masculine nominative. And then ha cosmos, definite article, the array auton. What is that? Well, that's our genitive plural of them. All there. So you could say all, that's our pas, their all their decoration or all their adornment, something like that. All their array, sometimes it'll say. So there's another pas. So if I just uh, circle our the uses of pas, I'll use it in a purple here. So we had tapanta, now we have pas. Now we're gonna continue on here. You're a trooper if you're still following along here. You can always pause and go back. <laughs> I know I'm going pretty quick. Um, so we have now 2-2. Two, two. Kai sunetelesen. Now you might hear some of the same sound as we get from verse 1, and that's because it's from the verb um, suntileo, which we haven't learned yet uh, in mounts. But that's what it looks like. Suntileo, I complete, I am finish, finishing. Um, and here it's in the active voice, whereas in verse one, um, it's in the passive. They were completed. Here it's in the, it's he completed or he, she, it completed. But again, hateos, uh, we're given the subject. Thus, God completed. Now, notice here. Ente himera. Te hecte. En te hemera te hecte. So for you who've been paying attention in Greek class, what do we have? We have a 
a doubling of the definite article, and we call this what in Greek we call this a second attributive position. Second attributive position of the adjective. We say the noun first with the definite article, tehimera in the dative, right? And then we have the uh, uh, repetition of that definite article, te, and then we have the adjective that is in agreement, tehekte. So this is now the day the sixth. the sixth day. Now remember, in the end of chapter uh, one, we had it with what we call anarthris, without the article. We just had hemera hecte. Here we have te hemera te hecte, on the sixth day or by the sixth day. And remember our preposition n in Greek always takes the date, oops, right in the delta there, always takes the dative to create the phrase. Now, little footnote here is that the Hebrew text says the seventh day here. And so that's a, another topic, but basically I take it, uh, the reason the Greek translators switched it to sixth is not because they wanted to change the meaning of the Hebrew, they wanted to convey it in Greek properly to show that God had not, uh, God was not working on the seventh day, but he had ceased by then. So it has to do with the semantic range, I believe, of the, of the, of the verb uh, suntileo. So then we have, uh, so that's a dative prepositional phrase by the sixth day, and then we have ta erga autu, ta erga autu, his works, his deeds. And so erga, ta erga, just like ta panta above, is a neuter. Now it could be accusative or it could be nominative, but it has to be accusative because we already have the subject, hotheos is our is our uh, nominative. So neuter accusative, the, his works. Hapoesin uh, is which he made. Again, that's future in the Greek when we do verbs. Finally now, let's look at this. Kai katepausin. This is now, notice the, the sin ending here. This is still, he did it. It's what we call an aorist but the subject is still hotheos. So, and he rested. And then what does it say again? Te hemera te hebdome. So just like we had the sixth day here, I'm gonna change color here to green. Notice that, te hemera te hecte. Here we have te hemera te hebdome. And of course, hebdome, that is, going to be a 212 uh, adjective meaning seventh hebdomos like that hebdome for the feminine and hebdomon right so we see this pattern over and over again and which attributive position do we have here just like before second attributive position of the adjective tehimera te hebdome and then finally our, our last little phrase here it says, he, he rested apo. And what we'll know from Greek, apo plus a genitive equals from. Right? So he rested from. And then, so we can expect this in the genitive, panton. Well, panton is from pas, pasapan, isn't it? And when we see the own ending, that means it's genitive plural. Now it could be masculine or neuter. We don't know at this point. All we see is panton. But then we continue. Ton ergon. Ton ergon. Well, we know ergon is neuter. And here we have an adjective coming before the noun it modifies here. 
And uh, so this is basically like a third attributive position. All the works, all his, and then out to modifies his. So all his works. Tanton ton ergon, all his works. And this is in the accusative, so this is the subject. Subject of the verb, he rested. And then hon epoiesin is which he made. Okay, so I know this was this video was crammed, but we're looking at chapter 10 from Mounts, and we're wanting to review the pas, pasa pan paradigm there in chapter 10, the adjective all. And we wanted to look a little bit at some scripture from the end of Genesis 1, beginning of Genesis 2, uh, in the Greek translation to see uh, this adjective in action and also to review uh, some other material that we've uh, learned so far in our book. Shalom.